Knowing some of you out there, and being a fan of this hobby myself, I'm sure some of you have some terrain pieces sitting around collecting dust. Maybe those terrain pieces are homemade, or heavens forbid, still on the sprues. Today, I'm going to show you how to turn these unimpressive pieces of plastic into terrain ready for battle reports in two easy steps. The first thing you're going to need is a brush. This can be any brush, but try to find one with short bristles, maybe one you don't mind messing up. The second thing you're going to need is paint. Any type of paint will do, however I suggest going with a simple base. Third is a wet palette, or paint palette. This is all optional. First start by cutting the terrain from the sprue, or get any homemade terrain ready. Be sure to get any leftover material off of the model. It can be easy to miss, like the insides of these walls sometimes. If you are trying to paint more than one piece, be sure to get all the pieces together and cleaned off. This will save you time and effort later for when you spray them all together. The mold line and connector points on these models can disrupt the painting process. You can clean off these lines by using your knife or a special mold line tool to scrape off the extra bits. These bits come free quite easily, but use the knife responsibly. These mold lines are left over from the crafting process, so they are easy enough to remove. Once you have to remove them and have the models looking the way you want, you can go to the next step, which is sanding. After cleaning away the mold lines to your satisfaction, you can sand down any leftover residue. However, this step is not needed for batch painting models. The purpose of sanding the model is to create a smooth finish. This will make the model, and the table as a whole, look better after it is all painted. Now on to painting. Take your models and give them a good spray. I stuck these pieces on some cardboard I had left over with some blue tack. You want to get a good even coat on all the pieces. After 30 minutes, the models should be dry. After they are dry, you can start to finish the models. For these models, I am using War Painter's Gunmetal Metallic Paint. Any metallic paint or metal looking paint will work, but I found this to be a good cheap alternative. When you're ready to start, be sure to have a small supply ready in whatever container you use. Dab your brush in the paint and spread it around to wipe away the excess paint. You don't want very much on your brush. You want a small amount of paint on your brush as possible, so when you paint the model, the paint doesn't clump up in one area. You want to lightly tap and brush the paint on, as this will create the weathered effect we are going for. Try to make the paint look as regular and random as possible. And pretty soon, your model will look like this. I brushed on the paint on this orc wall with a bit of a heavy hand. You can adjust how you paint as you go. You want to, mo you want to make the model look as irregular and random as possible. The more metallic paint that is applied, the shinier the model will appear and the less inner detail will show through.
If you are trying to batch paint a large amount of terrain, be sure to stop, breathe, and remember to take your time. A rushed job will look out of place on the battlefield, but a job taken slowly and carefully can yield incredible results for even those who believe they can't paint well. If you find yourself second-guessing yourself, stop. Put the model to the side and let the paint dry. Come back to the model in a few hours. If you are still not happy with it, feel free to try again. But after a few hours, the model might just look good to you and your future battle reports. This technique works for all types of terrain, army barricades, pipelines, city ruins, and even homemade terrain. Smaller pieces, such as this army barricade, will take less time. However, you will still need to be more careful with them as a lack of care will make them look out of place on the battlefield. This army barricade took me roughly 10 to 15 minutes to get to a degree I was happy with. Models with sharp corners and details need a bit more attention attended to the corners and details than rounded edges. Hive pipelines can also be done this way. Be sure to rough up the rounded sides and the blown apart bits on the models. A thorough once over with your brush is a good idea. Then return with a slight touch up with the paint after its use. If you take these tips and tricks into account through painting your models, pretty soon you will have an entire battlefield painted and ready for use. Be the envy of your friends and onlookers by having a massive forest of terrain to battle your foes and smite your enemies. Take care and travel on. Thanks guys.